Okay, hello girls. We are back. Okay, for 6.3, where we are going to go into meiosis. Okay, so before we let us all think. Yeah, how does Mr. Bin's family look like? If they have not undergo cell division through meiosis. That means they go undergo cell division mitotically. That means the same number of chromosomes produced in the daughter cells. This, will they look like this? Or like this? No, definitely no. Want to know how, want to know how does Mr. Bean's family look like? Well, yeah. So basically, uh, the children okay are produced the offsprings produced are normally usually uh, different from their parents correct all right in mitosis you have seen that uh, the daughter cells are the same as the parent cells correct but in meiosis the daughter cells are different from the parent cells and the gametes for example uh, from the sperm and from the egg we have two different sets of chromosomes each from each parent correct so when they fuses together that's when you get some of the traits from your parents, from your father, and another half is from your mother. Alright, so in this uh, lesson, we are going to learn on meiosis, which are carried out in the gametes. So, in meiosis, there are two important questions that you should know. And what is its relation to meiosis? The first one is, why do we inherit? only half of our characteristics from our parents and what is the sharing rule here okay so the answer lies in the process of meiosis so what are we learning today we are going to learn what is meiosis where does meiosis occur why is meiosis important? What is crossing over? Synapsis. And what are the stages of meiosis? Okay. Okay, so what is meiosis? Meiosis is the process of nuclear division of diploid cells to produce haploid gametes. Okay, for example, 46 chromosomes in parent cells. And it, uh, when meiosis happens, it only produces haploid cells. That means there are only 23 set of chromosomes. 23 chromosomes in either sperm or the egg. So when fertilization happens, then it produces back the diploid number of uh, chromosomes. Okay, so meiosis produces haploid number of. Okay, so where does meiosis occurs in animals and also in humans? Okay, it occurs in the reproductive organs, for example, in the testes for human. Uh, and also in the ovary, okay, to produce sperms and also the ovum, correct? In plants, okay, so the uh, meiosis process take, takes place in ovary and also enter the male and the female part of the plant. So in ovary, it produces the ovule. And in enter, it produces the pollen. Okay. Now, why meiosis is important? Okay. To reduce half the number of chromosomes into gamete cells. Okay. And why? Why half? Okay. Because during fertilization, the stem cells will supply half the number of chromosomes. So that the daughter cells can get the gene from each stem cell. Or we can also say that during fertilization, the, uh, the the chromosomes will be half so that the daughter cells can get genes from the sperm and the ovum from the father and from the mother. Now, what is gene? Gene is a genetic material that carries genetic information. Okay, it is located in the chromosome, the DNA. All right, genetic material. So now chromosome, I, I don't think I have to repeat this, but you have seen in mitosis also, chromosomes 
Okay, there are diploid number and haploid number. And the structure of chromosome you have also learnt in the previous lesson in 6.2. So, meiosis is very important because it reduces half the number of chromosome so that you look different from your parents. Okay, and half the, par half the number of chromosome is from your father and another half is from your mother. Okay, so one diploid cell will produce four haploid cells through after the meiosis process. Okay, so we have here the parent cells pad chromosomes. Okay, and then copy of chromosomes uh, occur before, it, uh, before meiosis 1 happens. So during meiosis 1, the chromosomes will separate and after meiosis 2, Four daughter cells are produced with half the number of original set of chromosome. Lah. Okay, so meiosis, there are two, uh, two uh, levels, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Okay, so in cell division here, for meiosis, we have two meiosis phase, which is the meiosis 1 and the meiosis 2. It is the same uh, phases that occurs in mitosis. We have earlier the prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. So, in meiosis, they are the same phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But in this case, if meiosis 1, then you have the professor mat 1. And meiosis 2, you have the professor mat 2. That means prophase 1, metaphase 1, tel anaphase 1, and telophase 1. For meiosis 2, will be prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. So, there are 8 phases that you should know in meiosis. meiosis. Okay, so meiosis 1 actually separates the homologous chromosome. So, it's a division phase to divide the chromosomes and meiosis 2 separates the sister chromatids okay same like how it occurs in mitosis so in meiosis there are two professor mat okay so meiosis 1 let's look at meiosis 1 the separation of homologous so as usual we have the interface so interface is that uh, this phase the first stage in meiosis the cells are in rest, but they are highly metabolically active and the individual chromosomes are not clear. Okay, the chromosomes exist in the form of chromatin and there is a nucleus still present there and they are diploid. Okay, in prophase 1, okay, you see here we have spindle fibers starting to form. Identical chromatids are present and there are chiasmata. Okay, we, we will see what is that. Huh? So, the nucleus and nucleus membrane disappeared at the end of the prophase 1. Spindle fibers are formed. Okay, homologous chromosomes forms a bivalent. Okay, we will see in the next slide what is chromosome, uh, homologous chromosome and bivalent. So, in this phase, each chromatic pair undergoes a synapsis process. Important thing is that only in this phase, in prophase 1, that the crossing over process occur. The non-sister chromatid will exchange segments of DNA. So what is synapsis? Okay, synapsis is when the homologous from uh, chromosomes forms a tetrad or a bivalent is the same thing. Okay, so this is a chromosomes. This is a homologous chromosome. Okay, homologous chromosome. And both are sister chromatic. I will repeat. This, this is one chromosome. Okay. In this chromosome, if the, we divide into two, we have the sister chromatic. This is one chromatic and this is another chromatic. When two chromosomes are bound together like this one, this is a homologous chromosome. Or a tetrad or a bivalent okay yes okay now okay now what is crossing over okay crossing over only happens in prophase one correct okay that means synapsis has occurred that means tetrad formation okay and crossing over is where the exchange of genetic materials happen so where we have uh, here we have a homologous chromosome synapsis has already happened here Okay, and now crossing over is where the genetic information are exchanged from 
this two chromosome over here. All right, you can see here, uh, I've the color has changed. Yeah? The blue one has got some pink, and the pink one has got some blue, meaning that this has exchanged information. Correct? It can be at any part of the chromosome, not necessarily there only. So we have a lot of genes, many many genes in our DNA in our chromosome. So it can exchange information at any part of the genes. Okay. Then after that, this chromosome will remain such and undergoes process metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, and then until finishes all the meiosis process uh, until telophase two. So with crossing over process, each gamete can receive a new combination of genetic information. Okay, so variation is very important in uh, produce, production of a new offspring, correct? Right? So crossing over is the one that helps to uh, helps in variation of uh, human beings, animals, and so on. So here we have the non-sister chromatid that undergoes synapsis, okay, or crossing over that happens at the chiasmata, chiasma, okay, segments of chromatids that cross over. The point where crossing over takes place, chiasmata. Okay, so crossing over happens okay, between two homologous chromosomes and exchange of genetic materials happens. Okay, so this will form cause variation. Now, in metaphase 1, just now we have crossing over. Now, you can see here, this is the chromosome that has undergoes undergo crossing over so you have to draw them like this until the end until telophase 2 okay so in metaphase 1 the chromosomes uh, convene and align themselves in the equator of spindle fiber same must have the equator or the metaphase plane okay uh, this is the same as mitosis but only thing the difference in meiosis 1 is that the homologous chromosomes are the one that align at the metaphase plate or the equatorial plane. So homologous chromosomes are still paired up at the centromeres at the equator. In anaphase 1, the homologous double helix, uh, the homologous uh, chromosome are the one that are going to move at the opposite pole. They are still in chromosome. I mean chromosome hasn't separated into chromatid yet. They are still chromosomes. The homologous chromosome separates. Okay, so when you draw, like you see here, okay, the crossing over chromosome still draw as the same. Okay, so they will move up to the opposite poles of the spindle. Okay, this is the centromere, yeah? still at the center attached. Okay, on telophase 1, chromosome reaches the poles and spindle fiber will disappear. The cell divides across the middle and forms two daughter cells. Chromosomes in daughter cells are still consist of two chromatids. Okay, two chromatids. One, two. Huh? Alright, and the uh, cells may go into short interface of uh, or go into late into prophase of meiosis 2 division. Okay, so telophase 1 when the chromosomes reach the poles. And then cytokinesis happens, two daughter cells are produced, okay, before they can undergo meiosis 2. Now, in meiosis 2 is the separation of the sister chromatin. Just now we have two homologous chromosomes separating. Now the two the sister chromatin will separate. So meiosis 2 is similar to mitosis. Okay, and there are no interphase 2, only the first one, huh, the interphase. Now, after telophase, cytokinesis straight away enter to prophase 2. Prophase 2 is uh, where the two daughter cells will form, uh, will go undergo the second mitotic, meiotic division, sorry, meiotic division. The centrioles will migrate to the poles and new spindles are formed. And the nucleus and uh, the nucleolus and the nuclear membrane brain will disappear okay as you can see here nucleus and the nuclear membrane will start to disappear the chromosomes are still the same you have to draw it until the end eh? the one that has undergo uh, that has undergo uh, crossing over 
okay this is the same as you if you look through from prophase to metaphase to telophase 1 until now prophase 2 the drawing has to follow accordingly yeah? the number of chromosomes and the uh, the shape the size of chromosome has to follow now in metaphase 2 same thing you have the plate again or the equatorial plane we call it so the chromosomes will align at this uh, equator okay now this chromosome this is same like in mitosis uh, in the um, metaphase in mitosis okay so see the chromosome they are aligned at the plate uh, equatorial Okay, and then we have the centromere, then we'll separate. Okay, the centromere. Now, the chromosome. Okay, just now we have the chromosome. Correct? Let me draw the chromosome for you. Okay, this was the chromosome in metaphase. Correct? Now, the sister chromatid, the two sister chromatid will separate. Now, the centromere. Okay, this is the centromere. Okay, will be pulled towards the opposite pole. Opposite for both for both the cells produced from meiosis 1 then we'll, it will reach to telophase 2 telophase 2 is when the chromosomes will reach to the opposite poles okay now we have two more cells okay two more cells here that are going to be produced after meiosis 2 okay so the nucleus and the nuclear membrane and the nucleus will reform and the chromosomes will regain the trait like form so the chromosomes are formed again eh? so you look at this number of chromosome here okay it is half the number of chromosomes in the parent cells right so after telophase 2 then cytokinesis happened now we have four haploid daughter cells okay we have the four daughter cells here so, due to the crossover, all the four haploid cells are different from each other in their genetic composition. Look at this. They are not the same. This one, both chroma uh, chromosomes have no crossing over happens. Here have one crossing over. This is a different one. Okay, this one, both also got no crossing over, but also different. This is the smaller one is the blue and the this one is the pink. Okay, and here it has undergo crossing over. So, it's not going to be the same. So when you draw it from uh, prophase 1 until telophase 2, you have to make sure the number of chromosomes and the shading that you are going to do, it is tally until you reach the telophase, uh, telophase 2. So how is it? Never mind. We will do during the activity uh, assignment. Okay, so we are done. Okay, we are done. So what you are going to do is you are going to draw each phase in meiosis meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 how i will let you know in the assignment uh is assignment section later that uh how are you going to draw each and everything one by one i have sample i will give you the sample so you draw according to it if you have any questions you don't know how to draw after looking at the sample after looking at the instruction given in the assignment let me know and we shall discuss further okay so we are done for 6.3 meiosis. Uh, I hope this will help you in doing your notes. Make sure you do your notes. That's very important. Without notes, you won't be able to remember. You won't be able to understand better whatever I've taught here. So while you watch this video, make sure you take the notes. You can pause at any time. You can rewind. You can replay all over again and again until you understand the topic. Okay, girls. So we are done today. Thank you so much. Goodbye.